this is a demonstration where we're going to migrate from the AD server that we first set up for the corporate BYOD and we're going to switch that to the onboard database that's within CloudPath. Uh, this is just a demonstration of seeing how we can modify or change authentication servers and see how the onboard database functions as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to modify the BYOD uh, workflow. So what we're going to do is go down to the configuration here. We're going to go into workflows Underneath the corporate BYOD, we see that we have the traditional Active Directory uh, that, we, that we talked about before. Uh, we're going to actually delete this one, and then we're going to replace it with authentication to the local onboard database. So the way we do that is we remove step three. We, we click on the X over here on the far right, and then we push delete. And now we no longer have that step for authentication. Now, the nice thing here is, is if this were active and there were people onboarding, this still wouldn't affect them, right? Because we still have to publish it. We still have to do a snapshot. In this case, we did not do that. So we're simply staging this, allowing us to be able to implement this at a later time if we so choose. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and insert step here. Now we're still going to authenticate to a traditional authentication server, but instead of an Active Directory, we are actually going to go to the local onboard database. So we're going to push next here. Uh, we're going to define a new authentication server. We're going to push next. And then notice that this is what was came up before. It was through the Active Directory, but we're not going to do that. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and we see where it says use onboard database. This is the database that is housed and set up to be uh, allowed to be used within CloudPath. Uh, you can set up accounts in that, and as a result, people can authenticate to that. Uh, you could have a certain flow or branch that you have specifically for uh, temporary users or you know, any way you want the, to use this authentication. Each one of the branches within the workflow can have its own authentication, own authentication method. In this case, we're using the onboard database uh, as an example. So we're going to push next here. We're going to go ahead and leave the display name as login for CloudPath in the database there. Uh, you can see there's some other options that we can change in here. Uh, we're going to leave all those as default as well. Again, for just an uh, example case, we could use the, the CAPTCHA if we wanted to. Uh, you know, various things that you can adjust from the, the onboard database if you so choose. We're going to push save there. And now we see that the onboard database is the one that's going to be used that whenever the devices reach out uh, from the radius perspective, this is going to be an authentication device. Now, we just created this database, so do understand there's nobody, there's no account set up on it. So we're going to need to go and configure those accounts. So we're going to go underneath authentication servers because we just created those. And now notice there's two of them here. What's this one from? This one is the one we created originally when we first created the BYOD uh, corporate uh, branch. All right, and so that was the authentication method. Notice that we deleted it in the workflow, but that did not delete the, the server itself. So this server is still active. It still is independent of that workflow. We could add this to a different branch later and use an existing Active Directory server and use this same one with the same setup and everything else if we so chose. So uh, just to understand that when I delete things out of a workflow or if I were to delete a workflow completely, uh, it does not delete the servers or other services we've set up to accommodate that workflow. Uh, and so that's the reason why you still see this active. So this is the one we just created, though. So it's a Ruckus training database. We're going to go ahead and click the down arrow here, and we can now see that we can add a user. All right, so the onboard users here. So we're going to click on this, and it's going to ask for an email address. I'm going to go ahead and put in my uh, email address here. We're going to put in my first name last name and we're going to be able to create a company name uh, we can put uh, whatever we want there uh, you know in this case be brocade and I can change my username so in this case I can change it to what I like if we click on the eye arrows by the way over here uh, you can see that we can change those usernames if we so chose so I'm gonna go in and put this it's just jazz rich 75 
Also notice we can add groups to this, all right? So if I click this arrow here, you can see the semicolon separated for the group names, and it's good for policy decisions, and uh, it's something that can be referenced here when it comes to the, the onboard database, if you so choose, all right? So once we've done that, I'm gonna push Save, and then we check this, we can go down to that server again, we can now see that there is a user there. Now let's look at a couple of the options that we can do uh, when it comes to the users in this database. First of all, we can go in and modify that user. So we can click on this. Uh, if there was a case that we wanted to block them or say, okay, we no longer want them to come on, naturally we can check that. We can even put in a reason why uh, and specify that. So this is, again, for records and referencing later. Uh, we're not going to want to do that for that user, but do know that we can make modifications if we so choose there. Also, it can be a case that we can go in and change the password or reset the password. So if I were to click on this, this would basically send a second email and that email would be going out with a, a password to replace the one I just sent when I set up this account. And so ultimately that uh, is a way we can reset it. You know the admin doesn't necessarily see that password, it's just simply sent out through the mail server system that's already built into CloudPath. And then of course I could delete that account if I so choose and I would check the X here and then that account would no longer be used for authentication within uh, the CloudPath. So once we've done that, we're gonna go back to our workflow and we're going to look, so now we have the authentication, we can hover over it, we can see that the onboard database is going to be used for authentication. Also keep in mind that we just staged this, right? So it's a case that I've configured and changed this, but it does not affect the active workflow that we have working right now because I have not published this. So it could be the case that if you want to stage this, you could set this up and then you could publish it at a, at a non-productive time if you want, however you want. But do know that it does not take effect until you actually publish it. So we're going to go up to the top left in this case and we're going to push publish. I'm going to use the newest wizard. We're going to push create. And we see that that snapshot's working to become active. takes a few moments for it to pull the information together and then basically publish it. So we see now that it's published and a couple of things that I haven't shown you before that I want to show now is that I can go into this snapshot and I can modify it in the sense of labeling it and providing detailed information. So in this case, we can see that I could change the name here. It's at snapshot 14 right now. Uh, I could change that to uh, change to database, uh, onboard database, or I could even put that in the description. So I'm going to put that in here. The B4 Corp. BYOD. And so this is just a note that I can reference. So if I needed to or reference back or even have some level of, of a change log of seeing what is taking place within that workflow anytime we have publishing going on. So in this case, we have some information there. And so ultimately, this is now active, right? We have a green light on the snapshot that I just published. And so now this is the new experience that users are going to have uh, within this workflow of anybody that's trying to onboard using it. Now we're going to see that, uh, you know, in the enrollment process, we do have the BYOD. If we hover over it, we do now see the onboard database is going to be used. Now let me go back to my email and let's take a look at the email that I received. So here's the email I received. You can see it came from CloudPath server, ruckuswireless.com. Uh, and here is the username and the temporary password that I have for the authentication coming into this device. Uh, or in, specifically to the onboarding database. So I'm going to minimize that and we're going to go through the experience to see what we have going on here. The URL, start, we're going to go next. We have our options there again. We're going to click on the BYOD. That's the username and then the password. We're going to put in the password they sent me. And as we see that we are now ready to download the certificate 
in my configuration to get onto that secure wireless or the secure SSID that I have set forth in that uh, configuration. We're going to close that out. Let's go back and look at that configuration again real quick. So we're going to go in the enrollment process. This is what I just went through. So we went through and had this uh, th uh, this option. Because I did not have any existing certificates, it didn't option this. But ultimately, that would have caused me to have a download, uh, and that would have configured me for the James Secure and given me a certificate that was the uh, Cloud Path Ruckus Training Intermediate CA. Now, now that we've done this, I want to go back to the way we were. And so I'm going to, normally I just clean this up, but I want to kind of show you, just to show you how easy it is for us to be able to go back and configure this back to the way we had it. Because again, remember, we don't have to go reconfigure that authentication server. We don't have to go back and configure those things because we now have those as options within our configuration here. So in this case, authentication servers, let's go back and look at it. I'm simply going to go back to this server and have them authenticate to this, which has already been configured. All right. So we're going to go back to the workflows. I'm going to delete this configuration here. I'm now going to create or basically insert a authentication option again. We're going to click on next server. Push next. And now we're going to see we're going to reuse the Active Directory. That is the one we saw in there earlier. And here are the two options. Uh, we're going to use the AD this time. Push next. We're also going to reuse the, reuse the existing pay, web page that we have as well. This is one, the one for the login for the, the Cloud Path Ruckus training. So we're going to be able to click on that. And we're going to push next. And as a result, we're voila, back to the way we were. Here is the Active Directory information that we had already configured for that configuration device. Here is uh, the option that we're going to do uh, when it comes to having them log in. Now, the only last thing we need to do here, and everybody should remember and know that now, is I've got to go publish this, right? Because I have just staged it at this point. Uh, so I'm going to go in and publish this again using the most current wizard, create. Still loading, and we can see that now it has taken the new snapshot and made it active. And I'm going to go in and make some notes here real quick. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to say removed online database. Just a simple way for me to be able to reference it and know what I did. So now I'm starting to see a record of some of the changes that I made. And again, now that if we were to go review it, I'm not going to do it, but uh, if I were to go to go to the advanced and launch this again, we would notice that the authentication that uh, is required is the one of accounts that are on the AD server because we're going to be reaching out to it for authentication. So this completes the module or excuse me, Lab 7B, where we convert from the AD to the online database and back again. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to showing you some other Lab demonstrations.